worship for Sunday, January the 9th, 2022, the baptism of our Lord. Today's festival rejoices in God's blessings. We recall and celebrate our adoption as God's children, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the promised company of Almighty God when we pass through the waters, the rivers, and fire. On this day, the heavens open again for this assembly, and we receive the gift of God's beloved, Jesus. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places and times, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. Today's worship is being saved to YouTube. For those of you who are watching on YouTube and don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Cambridge, Ontario, and we're glad to have you join us. This week, Council decided to pause in-person worship, at least through January, on the recommendation of our bishop. Our suspension of in-person worship is a demonstration of love and care for us and for our neighbours. You can also express love and care by being vaccinated and by getting a booster shot. Thank you to the people who took down the Christmas decorations, Shirley and Conrad Keller, Sue Brethauer, Carol Brand, Barry McIsaac, Carl Weiss, and Keith Rivers. Your work is certainly appreciated. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. So most of us would know our full names, first, second, and last names. But most of the time, people call us by our first name only, or perhaps by a nickname, or even a shortened version of that first name. Our full name is reserved for important things and special times, like when you get married and sign the marriage license or when you get confirmed and say yes to God, or when you get a driver's license, or when you sign a mortgage to buy a home. In today's first Bible reading, we'll hear God say, I have called you by name, you are mine, and do not fear, I am with you. In the story about Jesus that I'll read in a few minutes, God said to Jesus that when he was baptized, God said, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. And God said that to Jesus before Jesus had taught anybody, healed anybody, or died on the cross. God loves us, not because of anything we do or don't do. God loves us just because. God calls us by name because God loves us. And knowing that God loves us can be comforting when we're afraid. One way to help us feel God's comforting love when we're afraid is to pray a breath prayer. That's a short prayer with two phrases that you say, one phrase breathing in and the other phrase breathing out. Let's try this breath prayer with phrases from today's first reading. Phrase one is, I have called you by name. And phrase two is, you are mine. So breathe in while saying, I have called you by name, and then breathe out while saying, you are mine. Let's try that. In, I have called you by name, out, you are mine. What would be a good time to say a breath prayer like that? Time, a time when you might need to feel God's comforting love. 
perhaps when sitting down at school to write a test, when that kid who always hurts you starts walking toward you, when you're handing, they're handing out your report card next month and you're worried about your marks, or when your parents send you to the timeout mat for something that you've done wrong. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer, prayer posture. It may be hands open, eyes facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded, head bowed, and eyes, cross, eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for loving us even before we do anything good, even when we do something wrong. Help us to feel your comforting love, especially when we're afraid. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. In an email to many of your parents and on our church website, stpaulscambridge.org, our children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. When you pass through the waters, do not fear, for I am with you. Near the end of Israel's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring the people home. They no longer need to be afraid because the one who formed, created, and called them by name now redeems them from all their enemies. God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. A reading from Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, Nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created, for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The baptism of Jesus with the descent of the Holy Spirit. The reading opens with questions about the identity of the Messiah. John the baptizer insists that he is not the Messiah. Instead, he points ahead to one who is coming. And whether the voice of God was heard by all or only by Jesus, God settles the matter. Jesus is God's beloved Son. Please rise as you're able for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand clear the threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his granary, 
but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Today's first reading is so beautiful and so hopeful that it's often read at funerals to remind those whose lives have been shattered that God still loves them. Listen to today's, today's first reading again, this time the way that Eugene Peterson translated it in his message Bible. But now, God's message. The God who made you in the first place, Jacob. The one who got you started, Israel. Don't be afraid. I have redeemed you. I've called your name. You are mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end, because I am God, your personal Savior, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you, all of Egypt with Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back, trade creation just for you. So don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'll round up all your scattered children, pull them in from east and west. I'll send orders north and south, send them back. Return my sons from distant lands, my daughters from faraway places. I want them back, every last one who bears my name, every man, woman, and child whom I created for my glory, yes, personally formed and made each one. Beautiful words of great love and hope that can help us to know that we are beloved and esteemed by none other than God. What is it that validates you? What is it which gives you a sense of worth? To what do you turn to gain a sense of importance? How do you reinforce the hope that what you do actually matters? That your life has meaning and purpose? In short, from where do your sense of self-worth and dignity come? For Christmas some years back, in the first year that our oldest son, Kyle, was born. Janet and I were given a helpful book about raising children. The book's title was What to Expect in the Toddler Years. And as young parents who really didn't know what they're doing, like most, we found the book a very helpful and meaningful gift. In talking about self-worth, this book noted, Studies show that children who learn to believe early on, I'm a good person, a valuable person, are more likely to grow up believing in themselves. They have less need to impress others or to receive the approval of others in order to feel good about themselves. They can have rewarding relationships with others, can better handle peer pressure, and can reject drugs and other self-destructive behaviors if they have high esteem, high self-esteem. The book then goes on to list how parents can help to foster that sense of self-worth in their children. And as I read that section, it struck me that this is exactly what our God does for us. Our baptism is the best source of a lasting sense of self-esteem and being valued. See if you agree. According to this book, What to Expect in the Toddler Years, we can foster a sense of worthiness in our children by laying on the love. The book says, Human beings can't feel good about themselves unless they have known love. The no-strings-attached kind of love that says, I love you no matter what. This is exactly the kind of love that our God gives to us. A no-strings-attached kind of love. That even when being tortured on the cross, Jesus could pray for his tormentors saying, 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. God loves us unconditionally with no strings attached. No matter what you or I do or don't do, God's love for us continues. Nothing that we can do can make God love us more or less. The love of God, who became our Heavenly Father in baptism, can build our self-esteem as we come to realize that we are indeed loved and esteemed by God. Beloved and esteemed by God, our lives will bear witness to that baptismal reality. We bear witness to our baptism when we're willing to risk and to try, with God's help, a new thing. For some, that might be stepping out to become a leader, a scout or guide leader, for example. For others, being willing to risk might mean singing in the choir, even though our voices are not equal to those of Pavarotti or a Dame Janet Baker. Baptized into God's presence and forgiveness, we can be willing to risk and to try, confident that even when we fail, we are loved and forgiven. We can bear witness to our baptism when we are willing to do tasks which don't require the spotlight. Someone has to clean the toilets. A job that doesn't give a whole lot of satisfaction. A job that does not add a whole lot to our own self-esteem. But the kind of job that you and I are free to take because our sense of value and purpose does not depend upon the job that we do or upon the recognition that we receive. Our sense of value and purpose comes from God's estimation of us. We bear witness to our baptism when cooperation replaces competition. Competition is based upon our own need to excel, upon our desire to get. Cooperation, on the other hand, is as concerned with another's well-being as with our own. Knowing the baptismal promise that God will take care of us eternally, that can free us to take care of others. We witness to our baptism when we trust God's promise in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 that we will always have enough to be able to share. And so we witness to our baptism when a deficit in current funds doesn't tempt us to stop sharing with others through benevolence and Canadian Lutheran World Relief, for example. For the God who baptized us has promised us that we will have enough, not only for ourselves, but enough so that we can share with others. We witness to our baptism when we welcome refugees to Canada. By definition, a refugee is one whose life would be in danger if they were to stay in their homeland. Our Lord was a refugee to Egypt as the Holy Family fled for their lives, threatened by King Herod. Because Egypt welcomed Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, Jesus survived and was able to fulfill the work that God had given him to do. Caring for refugees, witnesses to our baptismal brotherhood with Christ Jesus who was himself a refugee. We bear witness to our baptism when we're willing to stand beside someone being teased in the schoolyard. Our supportive action witnesses to the fact that our self-image comes from how God sees us rather than from how our peers see us. Our self-esteem, our sense of worth and value grow out of the esteem with which God views us. The no-strings-attached kind of love that God gives. The attention God lavishes on us. The freedom and forgiveness with which our God continually blesses us. The eternally significant work that God calls us to share. Our self-esteem, our sense of worth and value spring from our baptism. If you or someone you know would like to be baptized but isn't, contact me and we'll joyfully begin that journey. Today's readings proclaim that we are loved and esteemed by God, 
just as Jesus was loved and esteemed. And that love and esteem are freely given to us without our having to accomplish a thing. That love and esteem are given to us in holy baptism. May our baptism enable us and even push us to care as much for others as God cares for us. What a witness to the world that will be. And the people said, Amen. The hymn of the day is We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus. It's number 451 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship and on the screen. We are baptized in Christ Jesus. We are baptized in His death. That is Christ is raised victorious. We might live a brand new life. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made, saying, God of grace, and responding, hear our prayer. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of God's love shown to us in Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know how that they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all, and protect the land from drought and flood. Move us to mitigate the effects of the global climate crisis, especially among the poor. God of grace, hear our prayer. Establish peace among the nations. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and social justice. We pray especially for overcoming political unrest in Kazakhstan. God of grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. 
make your caring presence known to the victims of the tragic house fire in Philadelphia. Restore those affected by snow, ice, frigid temperatures, and damaging wind during recent winter storms. And comfort all who are in need, including those whom we name before you. God of grace, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us all to be faithful in worship, fellowship, evangelism, service, and social justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccinations. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become more overwhelmed. Guide researchers and public health officials working to battle COVID variants and case count spikes. God of grace, hear our prayer. You created each of your saints for glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Our sending song is We Know That Christ Is Raised. It's number 449 and on the screen.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.